I didn't used to like the term inner child. I used to think that it was just a new age excuse to behave in an irrational and immature way and, and manipulate other people to somehow let you get away with it because it's my inner child or, you know, some it's like, well, that's a spoiled, rotten inner child. <laughs> it's time to raise them differently. That's not really the full uh, capacity of what it is that we're talking about when we talk about what could be called the inner child or what it, the Taoist sages called the golden fetus, which is a place that it's in the low body and it doesn't matter if you're male or female, everybody has an energetic womb. And in that womb is the golden fetus or the, the embryo of our authentic nature. If you wanted to put some hands or a hand down in that low belly, caution, you might wanna also put fingertips on your heart because sometimes that inner child is, uh, it's may have taken a beating. It may have some, there may be some rough emotions there. I assure you that the essence of what you will find in that little one there is absolutely worth investing in, worth supporting, and worth bringing compassion to and healing to. Because if it hasn't been tended for a while, it may not be feeling great. However, in Chinese medicine terms, it's like a crossroads of the three yin meridians of the lower body, the spleen, the kidney, and the liver. So that means that kidney, it holds the blueprint of who we really are. That's no small thing. And we wouldn't wanna be out of touch with that. It holds the record of our potential. And spleen, it is the foundation of our capacity to be nourished and nourished deeply. The capacity to transform what life puts on our plate into nourishment. Because there's a big difference between food and nourishment. Nourishment is half food and half the transformative power of digestion. You could eat the finest organically raised non-GMO gourmet cooked food and, 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 and digest it in bitterness and haste. Not recommended. You could be served Sometimes we are served rocks and sticks for our birthday. Happy birthday, it's rocks and sticks. And with a strong enough spleen, we're able to gain something that's deep and mineral rich for our bones. So that's a really important aspect of our being, that ability to be nourished, foundationally nourished. I would say that may be more important than ever during difficult times, both literally if the, we don't have access to the right kinds of foods or enough food, or when what life puts on our plate is rich in minerals and not that much else. It's very good to have that strong spleen, that foundational capacity to say, I'm going to transform this into nourishment. 
I'm going to transform it into that will, which will nourish my origin, my true self. And it is also the crossroads of the liver down there in this little fetus, the golden fetus, which means that it is the capacity for, it is the foundation of our capacity for recovery. No small thing. When you put those three together, it's like the stem cells of your soul. Who are you? How do you take what life has given you and turn it into the capacity to make a comeback from anything? It's a sweet and strong place when well cared for, when not dissociated from and left to the wilds, which is how it ends up in rough shape in most people. This is because this golden fetus, this child place, this inner primitive place is also the foundation of our sense of ethics, our natural ethical capacity rests here. This child place, you may be able to feel it in yourself. It's the place that is very upset if somebody hits, an, you know, one child hits another child with the shovel, it's upset. If somebody calls somebody a mean name, it's upset. This is the primordial natural foundation of our ethical response, which is why it's great not to be dissociated from it. I'll, I'll unpack that in two different directions. One, when we're aware of that child self, that child self, it's like an extra pair of eyes from down there that can look at the other person and say, are you in touch with that little child too? And if so, you know that this is a person who may make mistakes or lose their temper or whatever happens, but they will be sorry if they hurt you. That's an incredibly good thing, an important thing to know about somebody. On the other hand, and this will be a little jarring, if somebody is dissociated from their lower body and they're just with you from the waist up, you really have no idea how they're gonna feel if they hurt you. They may be just in it for themselves and this is what I'm doing and never mind all that natural seed of ethics stuff. So I'm gonna come back. And I'm gonna say very clearly that if somebody is not in touch with that child self, it does not mean that they are unethical. It means you can't tell in the same way that if they are in touch with it, you can tell. Yeah. It is true that because this is the natural seed of our ethics, if we're not holding this inner child, then when it is exposed to ethical breaches, when it is exposed to brutality, not just to ourselves, but when it witnesses brutality, possibly in a movie, possibly on a newsreel, it's very upset. And on its own, does not know how to handle that. And can get very huddled up and traumatized and shut down, which is a shame because then we are tempted to just forget about that little crying dish rag down there and get on with our lives. But without that capacity for renewal, Without that capacity for nourishment, without that bedrock connection to who we really are, and without natural 
ethical connections that allow us to come into a state of trust with others pretty much immediately when that recognition is there. Yeah. So the difference between trauma and pain from which we heal is not what happens. It's what happens after what happens happens. Meaning something dreadful happens and the child just has to deal with it on its own. That's trauma. Something dreadful happens and we hold that child. The child comes running to someone who loves the child and that person says, that was awful. It was a terrible thing that happened. That is not normal. And we are going to do everything that we can to keep that kind of thing from happening again. And meanwhile, I love you and I've got you. I'm holding you. I am suggesting that anything we can do to start supporting that inner primitive to move from built up trauma back into its healing state and its healed state is well worth it. Because when you meet people, like, like if you, if you uh, investigate Hector Aristo Bazal on the theater of the oppressed, people who have been tortured who are now laughing like children, growing like the new grass and playing, that's because their inner child is no longer the wounded child, it's the magical child. It's tapped into an upwelling of renewal and nourishment and authenticity that is breathtaking. The laughter the laughter that rings from those whose inner child is well tended. It's beyond healing. I, I would say it's a, it's a divine manifestation. 